In this lesson, you'll be learning how to organize qualitative data. There are several different ways to appropriately display qualitative data. But before you can get into these types of displays, I want to talk about a frequency distribution. So if you think about just the word frequency, how frequent something is, what does that mean to you? What does frequent mean? It should mean uh, basically how often or how many times something occurs. So if we're talking about a frequency table or a frequency distribution, what we're noting in this table is how many times each, um, what's the word, <laughs> each characteristic occurs. A frequency distribution is a list of values or characteristics and then the number of times that each occurs. It's just a way of organizing data sets so that then you can create charts based on these tables. A frequency distribution usually has three columns, um, sometimes, yeah, two, sometimes two. The observations, tally marks, and then frequency total. Sometimes you won't see the tally marks, but these tally marks are just a way for you to keep up with um, how many, because a lot of times your data is most of the time your data is not going to be in order. It's going to be all mixed. And so as you're going through your data, you know, when you see a one, you put a tally mark, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, you know, like that. And then when you reach five, you put a cross through it to show five. And then you can easily count those up for your frequency totals. And the symbol we use for frequency is this lowercase kind of a italicized F. A relative frequency is the ratio of the frequency to the total. So relative frequency is basically a percentage in decimal form. So we would take each of these values, divide each one by the total, and that's gonna give us a relative frequency. It's gonna give us the proportion that that observation represents out of the whole data set. A relative frequency distribution table is a frequency table with just an additional column. It has that relative frequency, frequency as the last column. And they're really useful because they can help us to um, provide a standard comparison. I talked about proportions. So instead of just seeing oh, one occurred four times and two occurred nine times and so on. If we added that extra column, that relative frequency column, it would tell us what proportion one represents out of all the observations. So four out of the total would, be, would give us a certain proportion. It would give us a piece of the pie, if you will. And it helps us build pie charts. <laughs> that went right into the next thing. To construct a pie chart by hand, it is a little bit tedious. It can be done and it's actually kind of fun. Uh, you build your relative frequency distribution table. You move your, um, you can figure out your percentages of your each observation so that you can label your pie chart. Um, and then what you would do, let's see. Oh, I'm talking about by hand. So this is a little different than the notes, but basically what you would do is you would take your relative frequency multiply it by 360 degrees to figure out the angle of the pie piece if you're doing it by hand. If you're not doing it by hand, if you're using software, then you see this in the notes, you still do your relative frequency table um, or even just a frequency table depending on your software. And you can pretty much just pull down a chart and it just populates for you. It's really simple. I am gonna walk you through that. I have a picture, um, of what this looks like when it's done. And you can customize this to your heart's content. You can change the colors, you can change the labels. Um, you wanna make sure you have a title on your pie chart. And then you can screenshot these pie charts and put them in 
um, into studies or into homework or whatever you're doing. So it is important to make sure that you label everything. Um, and then let's see, what was I gonna say? I did this particular pie chart in Microsoft Excel, um, but if you don't have Microsoft Excel because you have to pay for it, you can use Google Sheets, which if you have a Gmail account or a Google account is free to you. I will say that Google Sheets is a little bit easier to use on a computer or laptop, but I am using an iPad and it's pretty easy. It has a few less options for customizing the pie chart, but it, honestly, it just it gets the job done. So especially um, if you're working on homework and you're choosing a multiple choice option, you can pretty much figure out which one matches the one that you made. So you can export your data from homework. You can copy it from your homework into Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. And um, I'll show you that in a second right here. I just made up some data for the sake of this example. Um, I did do a frequency table. So I made this frequency table. And these were like answer choices. And then how many students chose A, how many students chose B, C, and D. And then um, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and do a relative frequency column. Uh, I'm not going to for this particular example, but I will show one in a second. So I've got my data in Google Sheets. This is Google Sheets using the app on my iPad, the free app. And I am going to highlight, so I'm tapping the cell with answer. I'm going to highlight all of this data. And then if you're using a computer or a laptop, there should be a toolbar at the top. It says insert. And you're going to insert a chart. On the iPad, it's a plus sign. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign and I wanna do a chart. And then it's gonna ask you, um, which type of chart you want to choose. It has over here on the right, you can see um, type. I actually want a pie chart. And then you can customize further. Uh, legend, I'm gonna do labeled so that I can see um, percentages. And then you can change titles and colors. You can change the um, name of your chart and then change colors if you want to. And then at the top left, you can see a check mark. I'm going to hit the check mark and it inserts it into the Google Sheet that you're working on. And then if you need to, you can um, resize it, move it, you know, take a screenshot, whatever you need to do. And you can see in this chart, it's got the percentages, since I chose labeled, it's got the percentages of each answer choice, which, spoiler alert, gives you the relative frequency if you work backwards. So um, I'm basically helping myself create a relative frequency table <laughs> by doing this. But um, you can see how simple that was. Um, if I had done a relative frequency column, then I would have had more information for my pie chart. And I think even if you're working on a computer, you can put the percentages inside the pie slices. Um, even in Excel, you have some more options there for customization. But as far as just getting the job done, this is pretty effective. And so that was pretty easy. And then you can also do, um, I'm going to edit this chart, edit chart. I'm gonna change this to a bar chart because that's my next uh, thing in the notes. And I'm gonna do, they call it column, which is fine. And there's that. So now I've changed it to a bar chart. And you can see in the um, X axis that I have my answer choices, A, B, C, D. And then up on the Y axis, I have how many times each one occurs. And this is going to tell us some help for, helpful information later on in chapter three. Like if we were looking for mode, we would see that B occurs most often. And so B is the mode. Uh, so, you know, if we were doing something like that, this is a useful picture for that. We can easily see 
you know, what most students chose, um, what a few students, you know, so you can see everything from that. So that is, those are two examples of charts for qualitative variables. Let's go back here, finish out the notes. So let's summarize here what we just saw. A bar chart displays distinct values on the horizontal, whoops, always do that. axis and usually relative frequencies on the vertical axis. You'll notice that in my example, I didn't do the relative frequencies, I just did frequency. But typically you're going to see those relative frequencies here on the vertical axis. This was an example of desserts chosen. And so we have each dessert and then we have the relative frequency of each one. I really love when those relative frequencies are sitting on top of each bar because you can easily see um, what those are. You don't have to kind of, you know, follow across and estimate and it's kind of hard to tell, you know, so it, it makes it nice. The more you can label without it looking busy or chaotic, the easier it is for readers to understand your chart. So I've talked a little bit about frequency and relative frequency, and we are going to do an example to show you how to do each one. I want you to pause the video and fill these two questions out to see if you fully understand the difference between them. On part A, you probably do know the difference between frequency and relative frequency because I just talked about it. Frequency is just the number of times that something occurs, an observation occurs. So it's like a whole number. You've counted them up, you've totaled them, and that's your frequency. Relative frequency is the proportion of each observation. So it's going to be a decimal answer, less than one. Always uh, less than or equal to one. It can't go over one. If you think about a pie chart, a pie chart, if you add up all the percentages, they should add up to 100. If it's over 100, then you've done something wrong. And if you think about 100 in decimal form, 100% in decimal form is one whole unit. So 100% of an entire circle is one entire circle. So the relative frequencies, and that's why I'm talking about B right now, the relative frequencies are the decimal representations of the percentage. So this is decimal representation of a percent. And the percentage is the relative frequency times 100. So I have an example down at the bottom. We've got M&Ms. We're going to pretend like you all got to have M&Ms and we counted them all up and it was super fun. And we filled out this frequency table. And so we have the M&M colors, we have the frequency of each one, which came from just counting. And then we're gonna use those numbers to find relative frequency, which we use to find a percentage. So to find the relative frequency, you take the frequency over the total. So go ahead and add up all of these frequencies put that in the denominator and divide them to get your decimal representation. I would round to, uh, the rule of thumb is to round to one decimal place further than your raw data. So one decimal is adequate for this particular instance. Um, I will say that I'm a bit paranoid and I usually go to two or three decimal places just to be more exact, but one is adequate. So go ahead and pause it, fill out the table and come back. So check your decimal answers. Hopefully you got answers close to these. They might be a little bit different if you rounded to one decimal place, but they should be pretty close. And then I want you to pause the video and add up these decimals and see what you get. You can see in mine on the left in the calculator that mine added up to exactly one, which makes my math heart so happy. They should add up to one because they're each piece of an entire unit. 
And so if they don't add up to one, then you might go back and check your division in your rounding. Now, if you rounded to one decimal place, then your number is going to be a little bit off. But as long as it's pretty darn close to one, and by pretty darn close, I mean like 0.99 or 1.01, .01, then it's close enough. Uh, but I, again, I will say that the more decimals you go, the more accurate it's going to be. So that's why I like to go to three decimals, but it just depends on what the problem is asking for. And I do also want to point out that um, my equal signs are squiggly, and I did that on purpose because these are approximations. They are rounded numbers. So I did squigglies because that means approximately, which shows the reader that they are uh, rounded. And then for the last column, for percentage, you're going to multiply each decimal by 100, which shortcut moves the decimal two places because of the two zeros. So this is going to be 29.7, 21.8, 20, 9, 9.8, 9.9, 8.9, 8.9. And when you add these up, they will add up to 100%. Then if you wanted to, you could input this data into Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, and then you could create a pie chart off of it. So let's see, let's try it. I wanna show you something while I'm filling out this table. Um, I've already filled out the first part, obviously, and uh-oh, I messed up right here. Need another 45, here we go. And then I was going to start filling in the relative frequency, but I wanna show you this part. I'm gonna insert a formula here. And if you're going to insert a formula, you're going to do equals to show that it's a formula. And then I'm gonna take this cell and divide it by the total And that's going to give me, well, should give me a decimal. So I use the wrong division sign. I use the backwards division sign. So be careful of that when you do that. Uh, and you can see in this decimal that it is the same thing that we got in the notes. And then you're going to take that and drag it, whoops, take that, drag it down. Hold on. For some reason, the dragging is not working well on the iPad. But if you're doing it in a computer, you can drag it down. Um, what I did was I tapped this, I hit copy. And then I tapped this, dragged it down, hit paste. And it pasted that formula in the cells below it with the correct cell attached to it. So if you need more help with that, just let me know. Email me, let me know, and I can help you. And now we have our relative frequencies. And then we can do a pie chart, add chart, pie chart. I want it labeled and there's our chart. Isn't that so beautiful? And it has our percentages there, which we found from the table. So that is a complete process of what you would do if you wanted to do a pie chart pie chart or a bar chart. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help. Otherwise, that's all for today for this lesson. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know.